Bite. Yeah, I got a bite. Nice. Oh, nice molly. Good one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice looking fish. Like the last couple of years, I've heard um, the Dakotas, both North and South Dakota, have just some exceptional fishing. All right. Good fish, brother. All right. Let's do her, man. Let's go. I'm excited. Sounds good. Hey, we are heading to South Dakota with my good buddy, Nate, on our way to go fish the Glacial Lakes, Roy Lakes in particular. We're going to go see if we can catch some big multi-species fish in the Dakotas. First thing, pay attention to your locator. So we're just gonna run these points, see if we can find whatever sort of active fish is, uh, is gonna be going out here. Me and Eric have been fishing together in the spring for a couple of years now. He called me about you know, two weeks before the trip and he said, what do you think about South Dakota? There he is. Yeah, nice Nate. Fish on. Nice job, buddy. Man, that thing walloped it right out of the trees. Nice job, nice cool. start. Nice work, buddy. Grab Way to get us on the board. Five minutes into it. All right. Nice little largy. One of the reasons I was really excited to come out to the Dakotas is because I've heard the fishing is so incredible for the multi-species fish. First thing I like to do when I'm learning a new lake is hop on that trolling motor, use my Polaroid sunglasses, and look and see what I see up shallow. If I see the bass up shallow spawning, if I see them up in the wood, if I see them on the rock, if I see fish up shallow, they're gonna be shallow all over in the lake. And what we started finding was that these fish were related to wood and rock and they were shallow. There he is, Nato. One up tight again there? Yep. Not bad, not bad, up shallow. What Just skipping that plastic is what I was doing there. He's coming up. All right. Nice healthy fish. All right, buddy. Well, I'm finally on the board. With Ready a nice go. South Dakota largemouth bass. What's really unique about this body of water that we're fishing is it's a glacial lake. And what those are is just a bunch of lakes that have been potholed, carved out many, many years ago. All the flooding has created uh, an exceptional amount of water out here in the Dakotas, which has been great for natural reproduction, fertility of a lake. I mean, everything you want in a fishery, shallow water bays, deep water rock, wood, everything you could imagine is that exists in all of these glacial lakes. I don't have a lot of confidence doing this stuff and some of these baits are real foreign to me. So to get a bite on one really made you feel like, okay, I'm doing this right. On total accident, we're, like I said, we're flipping plastic worms and stuff up at wood and I got a tick and I set the hook and it almost blew my mind. Fish. All right. Buddy. Right off that wood again. A oh, crappie. Coffee. Crappie, that's nice. cool. Ooh, I like that. Look at this. Nice. Oh, it's a slab crappie, Nato. I don't see crappies like that anywhere. We do quite a bit of pan fishing back home, and I've never seen a 14, you know, 14 and a half inch crappie. That's unbelievable. Look at this big, giant black crappie on a Senko. Welcome to South Dakota, huh? That's not something you see every day. I was real surprised when I saw it break the surface. Big crappie. Spawning colors, that is cool. Got him. Got him? Yep. Got him. Nice one? Yeah, it feels like a real nice one. If it's a crappie, it's a big crappie. Oh yeah, another nice crappie. Big crappie. I'll get the net, Nate. All right. We're gonna net this we'll one. Oh, that's this. a nice big crappie. Right up on that, right up in that wood. I love when you say get the net for a crappie. Oh yeah, look at this thing, buddy. Oh yeah. On that little gulp minnow. Look at that. That is a tank. We've got 25, 30 mile an hour winds. 
So we had to tuck up into one of these bays. So obviously when you find wood, usually you're gonna find bass. And Nate found the crappies. Beautiful big crappies. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Cabela's, world's foremost outfitter of hunting, fishing, and outdoor gear. By Triley, Angler's Trust, Berkeley Triley, Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. And by Abu Garcia for life. nice thing about this Roy Lake and these glacial lakes is there's a lot of bays, protected bays that you can always get out of the wind. These bays were littered with trees in them. We decided to start fishing shallow, fishing some of this wood we saw when we pulled up here to the resort. Kind of what I like about this area, you know, here, see, see how there's, look, look at that wood way out back there. Yeah. In there. Just, yeah. and there's a point right here. It just looks like it'd be a good spot. All this area, I'd like to, you know, fish it with jerk baits and jigs and... Yeah, there's just not enough time to explore everything here, mm -hmm. really. Yes, Nate! I love it! Good one? Good one. Yes! Way up there. Big smallie. Be a big smallie, Nate. Oh, yeah. I like oh. it. I, and then now he's going down on his knees! <laughs> oh, that one That's hits great. so far out. Well, Nate's kind of, this is his first year really fishing a lot for bass and yeah he's this doing is awesome. new man but i like it swim baits plastics but you know it, normally you fish for brown trout and walleye yeah a lot. more of a trout and salmon kind of guy but this but is a lot are, of fun you're doing awesome let me grab this guy for you here you go wow. buddy on the old swim jig with a chigger craw and we're just fishing the first main lake point right out here down from the lodge right on roy lake here you go man i'm gonna let you let that guy all go. right Nice job, buddy. Beautiful fish. All the fish out here are so healthy looking. It's cool. I catch some smallies back home, but I don't do a lot of targeting them. Um, you know, I catch them accidentally when I'm throwing crankbaits for walleyes and stuff like that. But to come to a lake that's got really tremendous smallmouth and largemouth fishing like this was something new to me. So to see all these bass all over the place is really cool. There he is, right by the boat, Nate. That's a good one. I'm just swimming that plastic in real slow. Yeah, that's working awesome for you. Oh, wow, that's another so nice fish. That's a toad. That's why we came to South Dakota to do a little exploring. You know, you come to these new lakes, you never fished before. Use your electronics, use your Lake Master chips and stuff so you can see these contours. We're fishing a rock bar that separates these two lakes. I wouldn't even know it existed here without that. Fishing a jig, swimming a paddle tail nice and slow, and we're catching some big smallies. Anytime I have the opportunity to fish a new body of water, and you can figure out how to catch smallies. Smallies are one of my favorite fish to catch, especially big smallmouth bass. We ended up coming out here, fishing the rock and fishing the windblown points, and that is where we, you know, just, just like in Wisconsin, we found all the fish congregated. There he is. Right here, Nate. Nice one. Another one in the front of the boat. Ooh, yeah. You oh. know, we heard there were some really big smallies out here. Well, I think you found one. Yeah, and that's, that's what they look like. Right there on that little swim bait. Just swimming it right across the rocks out here. Wow. Fishing with Eric is a, is a lot of fun, man. I like learning new things and doing things I haven't done before. And if you want to learn a ton, and just learn how to go on a new body of water and dissect it, that's the guy you want to fish with. There's one. Way out deep. Feels pretty good. Like I said, it's at the end of the cast, so it's kind of hard to tell. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. Real nice fish. Nice fish. Oh yeah, nice. that's a healthy chunk yeah, of Yeah, check this one out. Wow. Today we are using seven foot Fenwick rods spooled up with 10 to 15 pound Invisibraid with a 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon leader with a nail knot on it. And we are mainly using Texas rig worms like a heavyweight or a power worm, just casting them up and throwing them up to wood and rock. Got him. Yep. Got one, bro? Yep. Nice one. Oh yeah, a real good one. You need the net or you got it? I'll just grab him. All right. 
a nice one. The average size is just, you know, they're all such really nice, healthy fish. Pretty windy out in the lake, but getting some nice largies. It's fun out here in South Dakota, isn't it, Nate? Absolutely, having a blast. Prairies of eastern South Dakota usually don't conjure up thoughts of great fishing. Pheasant hunting? Yes. But big bass? Well, the area is filled with pothole lakes. But here's a little secret. Some of those little lakes hold big fish. I'm John Haynes, and this is North American Fisherman's Clubhouse. Today, Eric is fishing Roy Lake, a lake he's never fished before, which means this trip began with a true hunt for fish. And knowing that means he'll have to rely on electronics in order to not only find fish, but also eliminate unproductive or dead water. Now, narrowing down certain areas by knowing what's under the surface can save you a ton of time when you're chasing big bass. Members of the North American Fishing Club can field test gear through our new Stuff Stuff program and get access to exclusive deals. And now, there's a free and easy way to jump on board. Just log on to fishingclub.com backslash free magazine to sign up for your free subscription to our online edition of the North American Fisherman magazine. North American Fisherman is offering you a chance to fish with our guys. Wow, what a fish. Hey, I'm Eric Cotty with North American Fisherman. Do you want to come up here and fish with me? No, no, no. Hold on one second there. I'm Captain Tyler Capella. If you actually want to catch some trophy fish, you got to come down to sunny Florida and fish with me. How about a huge smoker kingfish like this monster? You can sign up at North American Fisherman's Facebook page, or you can go to fishingclub.com to sign up for a contest to fish with myself or Tyler Capella. Plus, everything is included. Hotels, flights, and a chance to see this. Hey, it's up to you. All you have to do is enter. Go to fishingclub.com or like us on Facebook for your chance to win. Coming up, what's lurking beneath the surface that threatens to destroy the water you fish? Find out on Silent Invaders, up next. This strange looking fish, with its big head and frog-like eyes, has invaded North America's Great Lakes. The round goby hitchhiked its way from Europe aboard the ballast waters of ocean-going ships. And as with any aquatic species that are not native to our lakes, gobies compete with the fish that are. One of the first things that they've done is they have eliminated essentially three uh, species, groups of fish. Sculpins, log perch, and darters have not survived the invasion of the round goby. Gobies compete with native species for food drive them from their spawning areas, and even eat their eggs. They spawn several times from May through August, and once these bullies move into the neighborhood, their population explodes. Since game fish, like smallmouth bass, have learned to eat gobies, some anglers are now using them for bait. David Jude suspects it was an angler who inadvertently planted the new species to Michigan's Flint River and changed the future of the ecosystem here forever. These fish weren't here, and now we've got uh, 60, you know, 60, 70 percent of the population is around gobies. Gobies are popular bait now, and using gobies for bait, I don't have an issue with it as long as you're not moving them. Moving fish not only can introduce new species, but you can spread diseases, and this is something we've seen frequently across the Great Lakes, across North America, and across the world. The irony is, although smallmouth bass eat gobies, gobies in turn raid the bass nests and consume their eggs. Because they are such voracious egg eaters, some professional anglers believe that fishermen should not lure the smallmouth bass off its nest during the spawning season. Watch here, we've got a goby coming in from the right. Okay. Okay, and as soon as the male chases him, a goby will come in again from the other side, uh -huh. the, but the male makes it back in time to chase it away. Those gobies would start to swarm into the nest and within 15 minutes they could consume every offspring. The population of the bottom feeders is so dense in some areas that fishing for some species, like walleye, can be a real challenge. As soon as that bait gets to the bottom, boy, it's just boom, 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 boom. I mean, just instantaneously, when that bait gets to the bottom, they're there. Although round gobies are providing meals for some predator game fish, 
their presence may be doing more harm than good. And as scientists continue to study the impact of the round goby, it's not so much what they do know that concerns them, it's what they don't know. And the role that anglers play in this continuing saga is all part of the never-ending battle with the silent invaders. This is North American Fisherman's Field Test, powered by Stuff Stuff. Everything you see here has been tested and approved by members of the North American Fishing Club. If you want the latest in new gear, this is information you can trust. First up, Boomerang's Big Catch Pliers has a retractable Kevlar cable to always keep them close and ready. The handle is made from solid aircraft aluminum, so it'll never rust. Club member Roger McCarty says it's a great tool that allows you to pull out hooks and cut line. Next, Berkeley Nanofill's Zero Stretch Performance eliminates kinking and spool memory and also provides bite detecting sensitivity. Club member Don May says it's a very durable line, yet easy casting, and even detects the slightest bite from a fish. To learn more about these products or to have your gear field tested, join me at fishingclub.com. Field test, powered by Stuff Stuff. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Berkeley Gold, alive, looks alive, feels alive, tastes alive. And by Hobie Fishing, powered by Mirage Drive. Up next, Knot Wars, and we finish up the day on the water. This is North American Fisherman. Two champions, one battle. Last week's winner, the Fish and Fool. This week's challenger, the Palomar. Both knots are previous champions of Knot Wars going head to head. This isn't pay-per-view, this is Knot Wars, light. We're using light line from Berkeley, the six pound 100% fluorocarbon, eight pound Trilene XT, and six pound fire line. Pitting the best fishing knots head to head in a competition of strength. Let's get to this great battle. Now, if you missed last week's episode, I'm gonna show you how to tie the fish and fool. Insert the tag end through the eye of the hook twice and then run it up the main line. Then bend the line downward to form a loop. Run the tag end through the loop five times. Tighten with the tag end after moistening the line and carefully slide the knot to the eye of the hook. So there it is, the fish and fool, ready to face its challenger, the Palomar. Let's find out how to tie that knot. Start by doubling the line and running it through the eye of the hook, leaving plenty of line to work with. Holding the main line, use the loop to form an overhand knot before passing the hook back through it. To tighten, moisten the line and pull on both the main line and the tag line. There it is, the Palomar. Two champions heading into battle. Let's see what happens. So here we are, the Berkeley Knot Wars machine is all set up and ready to go. The Fish and Fool, the winner from last week, the 2009 champion, against its challenger, the Palomar the 2008 champion of Knot Wars. Let's see what happens on Light Line and which of these knots holds up under pressure. There it is. One champion falls while the other champion holds strong. Both of these knots really close, especially on the braid. But on the mono, the Palomar, just a little bit better. Why? Because the fish and fool tends to put a little too much stress on that mono when you're cinching up the knot. So be really careful and make sure that it's good and moist before you cinch it up. Moving on to next week, it's the Palomar. It's gonna face its challenger, the Burke. So if you wanna learn how to tie either one of these knots, just head on over to our website, fishingclub.com, or better yet, download the Knot War app on your smartphone. Knot Wars, because no good fish story ends with a broken knot. There's one, Eric. Nate, what do you got there, buddy? What do you got? Oh, bit off. Wah, 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 wah. Pike. 
This is a really interesting lake. We only scratched the surface, I feel like. I caught my biggest largie ever. The crappies were unbelievable. Awesome doesn't even really describe it. And to see those spawning crappies all black, you know, giant 14-inch crappies, that's something you can't put a price on. All right, I like it. What do you got there, buddy? Oh, nice pike. pike on the jerk bait. Oh, he broke me off. Oh, no, he didn't. No, you still got him, mate. <laughs> All right, I'll net him. How big is he, buddy? I don't know, probably a 30-inch fish, nice pike. Fighting like crazy. There we go. Nice. Solid fish. These fish are just healthy as can be. Tons of those in here. Yeah. You can catch as many pike as you want here at Roy Lake, that's for sure. You know, coming here to Roy Lake, catching the wide variety of multi-species fish we did, being able to fish with my good buddy Nate, who normally doesn't even fish for bass, and he put on a clinic. He was in the back of the boat catching largies, catching smallies, and he normally doesn't even fish for bass. It's just a testament to show you how great this fishing is. So I would highly recommend, if you can, to come out here and check out these glacial lakes. Real big one, Nate. Get the net. Oh boy. One particular laydown that we found had a, about a half dozen largies sitting there. I saw a real good one in that particular tree when we went by. Ended up hooking a really big large one. Where you want me in front right of you? Right here. Look at that. Oh, oh boy. Look at that fish. Oh. That's why we came here. Oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> Look at this fish, man. Wow. If you don't think South Dakota's got some incredible multi-species fishing, I mean, look at how fat and healthy these big largies are, the pike, the walleyes. I am so happy I had the opportunity to come out here and fish with North American fishermen for these giant fish of South Dakota. What a great that fishery here. That is a giant, here, man. Congratulations.